Hi everyone, welcome back. As always, I'm Miss Hannah. I'm from the Bala Kinwood Library and today I have two experiments for you. Uh, no theme today, no water theme or color theme. Today we're just going to do some simple everyday home experiments that are a little bit wacky. So for the first one, we are going to see if we can make a potato plunger. So for this one, you will need a potato. For this one, I'm using a russet potato. Any kind of baking potato will do. The only requirement is that the potato has to be longer than it is wide. So it needs to be kind of long and skinny. And then you just need some regular straight drinking straws. So they can't be the ones that have the bend at the end. They can't be bendy straws. They have to be just firm, solid, straight straws. For this experiment, it's pretty easy. You just want to hold the potato in one hand, like this, hold your potato, and you want to make sure you hold it down toward the bottom. Don't hold it like this, you might stab yourself in the hand with the straw. Hold it down toward the bottom. You pick up a straw with your other hand, you want to stab the potato with the straw. So just stab at it with the straw. Is anything happening? Not really. Nothing's really happening. You might get a little bit into the potato, but probably not very far. So now, take another straw. And this time, you want to put your thumb over the top of the straw, like we did with our water experiment before when we build the straw pole. Put your thumb over the top, and then try to stab into the potato. Just like that. And you should, hopefully, be able to get the straw into the potato. Let me try another one. Oh, not the whole way through. There we go. Try one more straw, see if we can get a third one. Remember, always hold below where you're pushing it in because you don't want to get poked in the hand on the other side. Almost, we got that one in. There we go. Just like that. So does anyone know what is happening here? So the first time we did it, we just held it and poked at it. We couldn't get it in. That's because a soft, regular plastic straw is no match for a big, firm potato. However, when you put your thumb over one end of the straw, you're trapping air inside the straw. So when you trap the air inside the straw, the air pressure increases as it hits the potato. Just like that. The air, as you're doing it, as you're stabbing into the potato, presses against the sides of the straw inside, and that makes the straw nice and stiff. That's why you can't use a bendy straw. You don't want air to get trapped in the folds. It makes it nice and stiff inside the straw, and it can go, this one I bent earlier, but it can go, right through the potato. That is how you can use air pressure and build up pressure inside of just a regular, even kind of flimsy plastic straw to be able to build up enough pressure inside the straw to go directly through a big solid potato. Our next experiment is also going to use some items that are food and this one is called popcorn goes the raisin so for this one you will need four plastic cups we're going to use two with one liquid and two with the other in the first two cups you'll need just plain water and the second you'll need some club soda then for the food items You'll need some raisins and some popcorn kernels. So let's see if we can make popcorn goes the raisin. Okay, so for our popcorn goes the raisin experiment, we are going to see what can sink and what will float and also how strong tiny little bubbles actually are. So to get started, let's take one popcorn kernel, and this has to be unpopped popcorn, still a kernel. We'll take one kernel and one raisin. 
those are stuck together. <laughs> Just one raisin. So we have one popcorn kernel and one raisin. So when you take a moment and look closely at the kernel and the raisin. And if you have a piece of paper or a science notebook, maybe you can take just a second and jot down the differences between the kernel and the raisin. It might be that one's heavier than the other, maybe the color is different, the raisin's kind of a purpley brown, the kernel's yellow, um, one might be bigger, smaller. Just take a minute, you might be able to see through, not see through, take a moment and look at the differences between the two. Okay, so once you've had a moment to do that, we are going to measure out our liquids. So in our first two cups, we are going to put plain water. So I'm gonna put those on this side and these on this side. So I'm gonna fill our first two cups with just plain tap water. And don't fill them the whole way full, make sure they don't overflow. A little bit too much in this one. Okay, just plain water in these cups over here on my left. And then we are going to take three popcorn kernels and three raisins. So here's one, two, three. And we're gonna drop three kernels over here into this cup and then three raisins into the other cup of again just plain water so what do you notice has happened you hold it up hopefully kind of hard to see but if you're following along and doing it at home you will notice that they sunk. Both the kernels and the raisins have sunk directly to the bottom of the cup. So we're gonna let these guys sit for a minute and see maybe if anything else will happen. And we're gonna move over to these two cups, which we will fill with our club soda. Careful of the fizz. Fill these cups with club soda. Just like that. And then we are going to do the same thing. We're going to drop three kernels in the left cup and three raisins in the right cup. Put in one, two, three. And make sure to keep an eye on them and see what's happening. We have one, two, and three. We're gonna watch those and as you hopefully are able to see, we have two kernels now floating up at the top of the club soda and we're gonna wait and see if anything happens with these guys over here in the tap water or if anything happens on this side with the raisins let's see still a lot happening in our cup here Lots of bubbling, but they're still at the bottom. And we still have two kernels here that are floating in the club soda. We'll give it another minute and see if we can get anything to happen with our tap water or with our raisins. And again, if you're following along at home, it might take a couple minutes. Maybe we'll drop another raisin in and see what happens. Because our goal is to get a raisin to float up at the top. Let's see. Let's 
So it looks like for right now, the only ones that wanna float are our two kernels over here. So why do we think that in the tap water, there isn't a lot going on, but back here in the club soda, we have some popcorn kernels floating. We have some raisins here that are trying to float. Does anyone have any guesses as to why this is? So as I hinted toward the beginning of the video, it all comes down to the bubbles. So in both kinds of water, both in the tap water and in the club soda, in both liquids, there are bubbles that form on the raisins and the kernels. If you look inside the cup, you can definitely see there are some bubbles on the tap water raisins and there are lots of bubbles back here in the club soda. The bubbles in the plain water here are very tiny. However, the bubbles in the club soda back here are a lot bigger. Hopefully you can see them. They're a lot bigger and they actually have carbon dioxide gas inside of them, which allows them to get larger. And when the bubbles get bigger, they allow things to float. So that is why our popcorn kernels are floating on the surface over here. Our raisins, you probably can't tell, there is one kind of floating a little bit toward the bottom down here. But I know mine did not work exactly as expected because they didn't get the whole way to the top. Again, we are doing science, so that is okay. But the bubbles will allow them to float if all goes well. However, the bubbles will pop at some point. You can probably see in this cup here especially that the bubbles are popping and then they will fall back down to the bottom. I know one of the kernels fell back down to the bottom and now actually one just came up. But when they pop, they go down to the bottom, but they will come back up when new bubbles form that can help push them back to the top. And the wrinkled raisins can actually hold more bubbles than the popcorn. Remember, we observed them at the very beginning. The raisins are kind of wrinkly and the popcorn is very smooth, which should actually allow the raisin to come to the surface faster. Again, we are doing a science experiment. They don't always go as planned. So ours are not wanting to rise and I'm gonna leave them sit for a couple more minutes and see if maybe they'll want to come to the surface anyway. But in theory, the wrinkled surface of the raisin should allow them to rise to the surface faster with the bubbles than the popcorn, even though that wasn't the case here. But let me know in the comments if you got one or both to raise. Hopefully you got your raisins to come up just let me know because we could do it a couple more times. I know I might try it again, see if we can get the raisins to come up, but we are doing science and it doesn't always go exactly as planned. Thank you so much for joining me again today. I am so glad that you could be here and hopefully you were able to get your straws into the potato. If one potato doesn't work and you happen to have another one, you can try another one. Here's one I was working on before this video. So try a different potato. Maybe it's a little bit too firm. Um, hopefully so. But anyway, I really hope that that one worked for you and you were able to at least get it partially into the potato. And hopefully you were also able to get your popcorn kernels and raisins to float. But thank you again so much for joining me. I had so much fun with you here today. And we will see you guys again next Friday for another video.